Whoa, today is May 21st, 2017, and school is officially in. And then get a chance to say, drop that same music. I am. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. <laughs> No cuffing? No cut I'll it. Cuff it. Oh, no cut it? Okay. <laughs> I was getting ready to say, I'll cuff enough for everybody. That you do. You do. You do. <laughs> hey. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. School is in, and I'm Mitch, and I'm joined here today with the lovely and illustrious, the wonderful and incomparable aunt... What up, what up? And the ever burdened yet <laughs> yet still gracious Aaron. <laughs> Aaron? What's up, y'all? <laughs> See? Thank Doesn't you. he sound Thank you for gracious? That, that sounded <laughs> that, that sounded gracious. That sounded burdened. That sounded burdened. Ever burdened. Yeah, it sounded ever burdened, but still gracious. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure, because we forgot to wish the mothers a happy Mother's Day last week. But of How course, could we ever forget the mother? I don't know. We forgot, but, you know, we got all excited about colorism last week. It was, you know, it was exciting. So I don't want to forget before we get started today to also um, wish happy born day to the notorious B.I.G. Biggie. Mm-hmm. The late baby. Yeah. Baby, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hey, today, <laughs> today's show is um about humble Kendrick Lamar's song off his damn album. The song that caught a whole bunch of weird backlash um, mm-hmm. a while back. Not that long ago. People are still kinda of talking about it. It's it's a um it's kind of weird, but, but we're going to talk about it today. So there's like two parts to it that people took issue to or issue with. One of the, the issues that they took was the part where he talks about show him something natural, like an ass with some stretch marks. Sigh. <laughs> <laughs> and the other part was about the Richard Pryor afro part. Um, that one for me gets a little complicated, but so first we'll talk about um, about the the ass with some stretch marks. Okay. All right. So I want to step back. And I'll let you guys go. Like Anthony, Anthony has the strongest opinion on this, by the way. <laughs> 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 so we'll let Ant go first. <laughs> Ant, what's so, your gripe? My my whole gripe is. In the world today, we got so much trash music out there that shows no respect to our sisters or women in general. And now you got this kid, this guy, who always, well not always, but for the most part, keeps it positive and has a message behind his music. And he just gives you two examples and everybody loses their mind. Mm. It's like, what's what's going on out here? I don't, I don't get why you snap at Kendrick Lamar for listening to his preferences. But other people with a less positive message get a pass. Well, you know what that's about, though. What's yeah, I was getting ready to check that, but go ahead, Aaron. Don't don't yeah. assume don't assume that that I know what that's about. Like you know, like no 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 no, I won't. No no, we well, go ahead. <laughs> well, people like people like Kendrick, you know, and I think we talked about this before. That, um, yeah. they get put on a they get put on a pedestal, like you know. Absolutely. They stand for black positivity and all that mm-hmm. kind of thing. So, you know, when he say something like that, you know, it's taking more to heart. Whereas though, yep. you know, people that people that we look at in the industry is like, oh, they they a buffoon anyway. You know, like you don't take yep. anything they say seriously. You know, they don't they don't catch a lot of heat. You know. See, this is that whole. I remember we were talking about this before, Anthony, where we were talking about the difference between. Um, Will Smith saying 
you found my blinker bit <laughs> and like <laughs> <laughs> and like yeah. NWA, like NWA, you know, making a song called A Bitch is a Bitch. Yeah. Like nobody cares that NWA made a song called A Bitch is a Bitch. It's NWA. Yeah. But no I, I, expects, like expects Will Smith to say, You saw my blinker bitch. I'm gonna run you down, you old lady. You could like nobody expects Will Smith because he's Will Smith. <laughs> All right, when it, like keep it and keep it with the theme of the show, you know, schools in in <laughs> class. When I was in school, if the knucklehead in the class threw a paper ball across the room at somebody's head, he got away with it. But if I threw a paper ball in the trash can, I'm getting yep. in trouble. Mm-hmm. I'm questioning why am I getting in trouble when you just let this fool throw a paper ball at somebody's head? It's the same the same concept here. And because it's more like, um, again, people have expectations for you. They think you're going to do something and be something. Okay, <laughs> as, a, as a teacher in the classroom, with that, you know what, sitting in the corner, just spitting off the ceiling. I, I have zero expectations for his ass. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like you know you you know you would feel the same way too. That's just like you know like when Kendrick and Cole and people like them first came out. Like a lot of people was like, yes, this is a breath of fresh air. This is what we need. You know, and right? Like you know when those other guys, you know, um, I can't even keep up with them anymore. Like when they do the, when they do what they do <laughs> when they do what they do. We like, just sitting there like, oh, ass, here ass, we go ass, again. Ass, 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 ass. <laughs> Nobody you don't expect much more. No, but, exactly, pretty much. At the same time, too, though. At the same time, too. Like I, as a writer, I look at it as a, as a lyricist myself. You know, I get down with it, get down. You know, I do my thing. But I looked at it like he gave you an example. Like he said, show me something natural, and then proceeded to give you an example. That was the example that he gave, and I understand like a lot of people issue come with the example that he gave verbally versus the example that he gave visually well not that part that's that that's not this part that's the second part nobody okay, i'll leave that alone for now yeah, i'll leave that alone for now yeah. i'll leave that alone for now for now for now just for now <laughs> i know <laughs> but i missed out on the whole the whole ass the ass part too like i missed that well so here's the, here's the here's the hair so 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 here's the issue with the with the first part. Kind of sort of what happened was this. So originally the backlash wasn't just at Kendrick saying "show me ass" with stretch marks. Uh-huh. Okay. The backlash actually came from some other people um, getting on social media and propping that up as an example of something that was empowering to women and then a bunch of like people came in under that and the the backlash was to that it wasn't a you know like they probably would have let that stuff go it wouldn't have become an issue if people hadn't have propped that up as being an example of a positive thing because at the end of the day it's still hip-hop it's still misogyny you want to uh-huh. see my ass you just said you want to see my ass, fool. <laughs> but but again, it's hip. It's hip hop. We understand misogyny in hip hop. If you like, right. I've been listening to it, you know, forever. I don't have the same issues that other women have with misogyny and hip hop. Like part of that is just going to go hand in hand, and I understand it, and it, uh-huh. it gets like a, a a bit of a pass. But propping it up like it's then supposedly positive to women when it's kind of really not it's just you still want to see my ass you're just dictating to me what that ass should look like (laughs) well isn't that the narrative (laughs) these days anyway like the whole slut walk with amber rose was supposed to be empowering the women well the issue is that women want to decide if they want to show you their ass and what they how they want to show it to you you gonna I take, guess. I, you gonna take you whatever ass, ass I ass show you. I give it to you. <laughs> Cue that I one meeting with a coach flipping out. I can't. Not gonna oh, dictate man. my ass to me. I'm gonna dictate my ass to you. <laughs> I again, again, we and we've discussed this before. I'm not PC on this issue, 
and I'm I'm an, I'm an artist myself. I'm a writer, and you guys are artists. I don't believe in censorship at all. At all. I believe right. you counter you counter the 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 negative with the positive. You balance your images and you balance your art to keep one thing from like running down the other. So if you want to see something more positive. I shouldn't have to have Kendrick tell me to do these things. We should already be countering all like whatever it is that is happening out here with some more positive shit. On See, I didn't look at exactly, it. and that was and that was and that was my problem. That was my problem with the whole um, backlash on his uh, comment too, because Kendrick made plenty of songs where it was like it was stuff that he was probably more serious about. You know that people should have probably took it more seriously and like i feel like this wasn't one of those cases like he was just you know he was just being you know a little clever with wordplay and things like mm-hmm. that you know just doing mm-hmm. what rappers do and people took it to heart for no particular reason mm-hmm. well i know aaron it's because we know there are certain demographics right now that are just popping and at every turn there's looking there's someone looking to be able to find things. It's like the police. <laughs> it's like everybody is policing everything, which isn't necessarily a bad thing in and of itself all the time because there's a lot of things that we have done in the past that we need to re-examine. Uh-huh. And that should be re-examined. I'm not saying that they shouldn't. However, this is hip-hop. Again, I need for any women who listen to hip hop like it's pop music. I need you to take your pop sensibilities and I need you to exit the stage left with that shit. Well hip hop is not pop. If you well, call it that, then stop. <laughs> <wait>. <laughs> oh got bars, you got bars. Got but, bars. But I understand that and I agree. But at the same time, people like Kendrick who are pushing the boundaries of hip hop and pop. Like he's widely accepted. Like people who listen to pop also listen to Kendrick Lamar. That's very true. That's not his fault though. That's no, not it's his not. fault. It's and, not his fault. I'm saying you have to go into listening to hip hop. That's why it's, it's so important that more people understand this culture. Uh-huh. Like, you don't go to a boxing match and then expect, you know, okay, well, these are girls boxing now. These are not men. So they're going to come out with some flowers and throw them around the ring instead of, you know, <laughs> hitting each other. No. Yeah. They're going to be hitting the shit out. They're going to be beating the crap out. Have you seen a Ronda Rousey fight before? I've seen a poor thing, Ronda Rousey. Yeah, I've seen a couple. But Jeez, I'm just saying, out. they get their asses beat. Like, they get in the in that ring and they go round for round like any dude would. That's what hip hop. Hip hop is like has a component like sports. It's like boxing almost. It has rules. Oh. Yep. And you gotta follow those rules. You can't come in here like this is pop and you think somebody's feelings gonna get hurt and you having a Twitter fight. No. no. Now, in that same breath, though, you have to acknowledge that. That's the way that it is ideally, but that's not what everybody, everybody's not on that same page, you know? Well, they're not, and and, and, and that's why I'm cussing them out right now. Get the hell out of here with that shit. <laughs> yeah. That's why I had that's my, their, that's my their fault. fault. That's their fault. That's their that's, fault. It's not hip-hop's fault. That's your fault. That's why if I had my, my nickname pop, then Yeah. I'm sorry that, that you thought hip-hop was pop. I'm sorry that you drug your ass in here and you thought it wasn't when it was. Get the fuck out. Yeah. okay either learn to take the punches and i'm saying that to anybody i'm saying that to a woman to a man this is hip-hop it gives two fucks about what you think it should be it has a long to see it is what it is and certain parts can be re-examined i get it but this is not Hmm. one of them just like battle rhyming and stuff like that stuff is intact and going to happen people shouldn't be getting butt hurt over certain things that are in it. Oh, but they are. Yeah, they unfortunately. Are. Yeah. That's true. I mean, I think 
I think ass with some stretch marks is probably really, really mild. Mm-hmm. You know, like like you said, I mean, it's not a big Sean ass, ass, ass song. <laughs> right. You know. But, right. the, but the only other thing is, but like Aunt said, see, Big Sean now gets to to climb up the other way because he's like, oh, now I'm going to start making things that are more, you know, substantial. And everybody's going to be like, I didn't think Big Sean could do that. It's like a, it's, it's kind of like a weird prodigal son type of issue. So uh-huh. Kendrick is held to a really high standard and can't say ass with stretch marks. But Big Sean could say ass, 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 and then make a deep, like you know, like a, a, a much deeper song and deeper record. So I, I, I do get where you're coming from with that. It's kind of ridiculous. It's very ridiculous. It's like it's like a precedent. It's set. It's a precedent in place where if you say something positive, then it's going to be dissected and it's going to be attacked. And no matter what you say, if you have a reputation for being positive, then you're under more scrutiny than somebody. Who's talking out of their ass, pontificating through their tookies? Ass, 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 ass. No. Right. Yeah, they get a free pass to say whatever, and nobody bats an eye. In most right. cases, I don't even think it. I don't even think it's about the artist being more positive. I think it's about them saying something, you know, um, you know, more more thought provoking. You know what I'm saying? Like they just, they might just be more thought provoking, and it seemed like they got you know uh, a more profound type of personality. So it's like, dang, you know, like this person, you know, they might be a little deeper than what, you know, the rest of these artists are. So that's how people take it. And they put them in that, they put them on that pedestal, you know, but people like, like y'all said, uh, Big Sean or, you know, whoever, like, they not as deep. So people look at them and they like, well, I don't expect much from them anyway. They just be talking out their ass anyway, so. Right. Or like Future or... Like, I mean, you right. literally expect Future to say, just give you a whole song telling you how he just took a perk and just, just damn near passed out and has a double cup next to him with some dirty Sprite hey. and how he's... Like, that's what you expect. Exactly. Him, so. it's, no, it's no strong opinion to these artists at all. But, okay, like, what about somebody like Tupac, though? Like, Tupac moves back and forth between the two things all the time. He would get deep Tupac. as hell on you, and then he would make an ass, ass, ass type of joint. Tupac had ADD. <laughs> Tupac was a Gemini, just like Kendrick is. <laughs> Tupac, Tupac and, and Biggie, and Biggie. But, but Tupac, Tupac also had strong opinions too. Though Tupac had strong opinions. Like, whereas though Biggie, like, I was listening to Ready to Die the other day, and I'm just like, this ain't nothing but a bunch of ignorant ass shit coming out of his mouth. But oh, yeah. Because of the way, yeah, but because of the way he put it together, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's dope. It just is what it is, you know? But, um, yeah, with, with Tupac, Tupac had strong opinions on, like, uh, on, uh, young girls raising kids, on, and race, our, and. Yeah, yep. and race and our, our um uh police police brutality in the community. Yeah, politics, he had strong, all kinds of stuff. Right. Yeah. He had stronger Yeah, people knew he had strong opinions on all of those things regardless of the other songs he made. But then he would um, go and make, you know, you know, underground or some stop a hoe. Like I mean he, he still did it. it yeah, that's but, what I'm saying. But, but, but people, Kendrick can do the same thing. Kendrick, that. Yeah, but Kendrick can do the same thing, but people understand that he has strong opinions on real life situations too. Uh-huh. So my question, do you think it's because of social media more so than you think because Tupac got away with that shit? I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say he didn't catch as much fire as these people are catching mm-hmm. these days. No. And yes, I, I think social media plays a big part into it. It's a it's a whole wave. It's yeah. a trend. It's trendy to be upset about something. It's yeah. trendy Everybody. to be trending, you say? It's trendy to be trending. And the best way to be <laughs> trending is to, is to wallow in it's controversy. To yeah. or, Everybody, to, er- or to be offended by some shit. Yeah, yeah. Everybody and their mother got an opinion now, so. I mean, you entitled to your opinion. I get that. You can't stop people from being entitled to their opinion. But when it's not genuine, like when you just going out there for likes and slandering, well, not even slandering, but just talking down on something or, or expressing fake false false anger 
false Damn. anger, false outrage. It's like, stop wasting everybody's time with that. You know what, though? It's so weird with the social media where you used to be able to have your own opinion, but everybody didn't have to fucking listen to it. Like, now you can literally... If I don't like what Puffy said, I could tweet at his ass directly. Right. <laughs> like, back in the day when Puffy was, like, ruining hip-hop, yeah, I said it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, you yeah, couldn't but... get to Puffy directly and be like, fuck you, Puff. <laughs> like you, now I can just get on his Twitter page literally and say, fuck you at Puffy. Yeah. And, uh, fuck, yeah. You, he, fuck you at P. Diddy. You can that from you that shit. That you see that shit. Do you understand how listening. powerful that shit is? For those listening, we have established that Puffy is the Lex Luthor of the rap game. <laughs> 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 Just so Wait you know. Minute. He's like one of them. And I would I would argue that, that commercialism and stuff had already had seeds planted, but Puffy like came in the middle of the night and stole all those seeds and then planted <laughs> He's public enemy number one. He's like public enemy number one. And he also so the backbeat for public enemy number one. So there you go. I don't know what that nice. is. It wraps up nicely. It, it does wrap up nicely. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, my God. Any other, the, back, yeah, any other the thought? Because we got like one minute, one minute and some seconds for pe- for um, for first period, and then we're gonna be out to lunch with Anthony. All right, out to lunch. What's your last thoughts on that? Aunt? Final thoughts. Well, I, I gave, Aaron, I think Aaron has the more he wants oh. to say. Nah, all I was going to say is something about, you know, like the whole uh, natural thing and um, how women are oh, that, taking oh, yeah, it. Like, I kind of I kind of understand that aspect of it. You mean the um, second part? Yeah, like all part, of it right. together, though. All of it together, though. Like, not just the ass, but the hair, too, and like, you know, okay, the, cool. lighter, the lighter skin and all that. Yeah, now see, we're gonna get to that to the lighter skin and the hair as soon as we we, we um come back from from lunch. Come um, on, and, and we only got like like we got less than thirty seconds, so. Okay. All right. So as I was explaining earlier before we got on air, originally I was gonna talk about Young Jock. And his uh his out there hairstyles, but then I realized you know they're not his perm and all that. It's not really that out there if that's the region and the cultural the cultural items that you su- you subscribe to or whatever. So I figured out to lunch is only right to talk about that whole movement altogether. You know, with the dye in your hair, the fried dye laid to the side. Mhm. Like I understand, that was just like like you said on a previous show, everybody had a jerry curl. When we talk about Mike's accident with Pepsi and all that. Everybody did have a jerry curl. Yeah, everybody and their mama had a jerry curl, and everybody was getting primed and whatnot. But me personally, I always been like a big fan of the natural look, you know, the curls and that, the knots and whatnot. And I feel like embracing embracing anything else is a symptom of cultural appropriation. Hmm. You know, the desire to fit into what's widely accepted regardless of your background. Yeah, that's a big problem with a lot of stuff, though. That's true. That's true. What? Like, like the cultural appropriation or like, um, you know, trying to fit in with other, with other entities outside of your own and um, mm-hmm. I was, yeah, I was thinking about that earlier because, and I'm, and I know we had a lot of cameras conversations about it, um, like uh, just the direction that hip hop is going into. It's because of that. Uh-huh. It's because we, you know, it's because we weren't happy with what we had. It was like, well, you know, um, this is fun and all, but if we can make more money doing this, you know, that kind yep. of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was, I was actually watching Biggie videos today. And again, puffy. And like you could like almost pinpoint like where the videos flip over. 
and yeah. like you know, like wh- like where everything goes from looking because like we just had regular video like these videos became shot on film you know short short um you know masterpieces that you could probably turn into a uh some kind of film school uh, yeah hi William. Like, hi William. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hype way into the Stitch Islands all of a sudden everywhere you look. That's like, all Belly was, was an extended music video. Yeah. Um, sidebar, it was like a um back in the day or back in the gap when um uh what's his name? Bill Cosby was looking for a director for right. <laughs> for um the Fat Albert live action movie. Oh yeah. no. Hype Williams. I oh, would like submit, and then he didn't have anything to watch except for <laughs> Belly, like the movie Belly. And Bill was like, "Oh, dude." <laughs> Wait, can you imagine a hype Williams that Albert movie? <laughs> that would have been so gangster. That would have been so gangster. Gangster as hell. It would have came in like, "Ready? Are you ready?" <laughs> What's going on? Like, oh hell! <laughs> Fat Albert walking in with his red shirt on. Oh <laughs> uh, man! But you know, know what? That. The only thing that I would say about that, especially for women, a lot for us, we have to assimilate for survival purposes. Which just, is unfortunate. It is, but I mean that's that's part of our issue. Is that we, in order to be able to eat and feed your family and be able to go to work, because you know, black women were never largely stay-at-home moms. They always had jobs. They always worked. You didn't have much choice. Yeah, and then, so if you wanted to excel and get ahead, I can't walk in. I've walked into places with my afro and didn't get jobs. Now, did I not get jobs because my afro was big? I don't know. But if I had the same qualifications as somebody else. They see my afro and my name. That's a strike against you. It's two strikes. Nah. Yep. Nah, I mean, let's say I came in with some Bantu knots. How do you think that would go over? Well, it depends on if you're light-skinned or not. Even if you're light-skinned, I would say the, the more attractive you are, the more modely you look, the more you can get away with. Yeah. Again, unfortunately. Yep. Well, that but that that depends. That depends on who. That depends on who doing the hiring too. Because you got these white men that's attracted to that Afrocentric thing too. You do, but um, the statistics, you know, have um, come out a bunch of times about like say like hiring practices and stuff. Like a lot of times. Mm-hmm. It, if your name is ethnic, you don't even get past that first hurdle. If you happen to get past that hurdle, and then when you come in, they're looking at you. People hire what, in general, a lot of times what they find pleasing to their eyes. So attractiveness has been seen as a reason people get either included or excluded. And unfortunately, depending on who is hiring you or looking at you, your definition of attractiveness. What is their definition of attractiveness? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's in all. That's in all situations. It just so happens that you know, us having more melanin, like we got to be more aware of it. Yep. And and your hair, like again, some people are tribal. So they're looking at your hair, and the less your hair looks like their hair, again, it's animalistic, but they could feel threatened. Simply because we got more melanin and our hair is kinkier. Right. Yeah, I've heard that before, too. I mean, I've heard people, like, when they didn't think people were listening, that they say it reminds them of slavery. Like, let me, like, get near my fist and see how you can be reminded of slavery. <laughs> <laughs> the hell is wrong with you, idiot? Like, it's 2017 and we're still talking about this dumb shit. Yep. Because people are still doing it. Now, I can't understand these men with perms. Jaheem and your struggle perms. 
Yeah, Jaheim got uh, he got big mad at Charlemagne for talking about his hair dude. Young Jock and your and your struggle hair. I can't like I can't with these with these men because they don't have mm. a bigger reason to have fry hair. Young Jock look like a just for me model. It's my first perm. Get to her head so much easier now. Just for me. Grown <laughs> ass man with a kitty perm though. Uh, yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> But like, I mean, it's funny to us, but if you're from that region and that's like your cultural thing, then that's all cool. That's all good. I guess so. But a lot of things are regional. Yeah. You know, that I think, think I think more so, <laughs> I think it's more so that the issue is um, the reason why people are doing stuff like that. You know, it's not necessarily yeah. like if you want to be an individual, that's cool. Like, I don't care what you wear in your hair. I don't care True. how you dress or whatever. But if you're doing it because you're attention seeking or you feel like, oh, well, I need to do this to, you know, fit in with, you know, this particular crowd or, you know, I'm not comfortable or I feel I got low self-esteem about, you know, my darkest skin, my, my, uh, my hair, whatever the case may be, like, that's when it's an issue. Well, like, um, like, uh, what's the name when he started making those comments, um, too, um, Oh my God! Who was it? And it it wasn't about hair, but it was just like trick daddy last year. His whole, you know, black bitches and hoes need to get your shit tight because these Spanish hoes beating you. And like, what the fuck are you yeah. talking about? Like, literally, what the actual fuck are you talking about? Right. What does any of that mean? Well. Trick Daddy's out to lunch that day. Trick Daddy's out to lunch a lot. Yeah. I'm guessing. And, I mean, again, we don't listen to him for anything because Trick Daddy is Trick Daddy. You know, I understand. He's he's a knucklehead and he's a guilty pleasure and you play, you know, his song so you can laugh at his um, chicanery. But <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when somebody opens their mouth and says that, it, what it really is just saying to you is, wow, you really hate yourself. Yep. That's what Stop I hear. When I'm real. Stop hating yeah. real. It's real. And like, Jaheem is how... J- Jaheem is close to my age. Why do you need a struggle perm, dude? You need a struggle perm. <laughs> 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 I don't understand. That sounds so contradictory. <laughs> because, like, his... Because... When your hair is already gone, like you know your hair is going, shave your head, dude. Yeah, I be hating shave that Shave your head and too. grow a full beard so you can look grown and sexy and own that shit. Yeah. I always That's said if I start getting a bald spot, I'd shave it. Like that comb over his perms. Nah, no, that's not a good look. I'm not even going to make the obvious comment that I would like to make now. It's gonna move on. Your ex vice principal. Why not? Why not? <laughs> tell him. Tell him. Tell him how you really feel. Tell him how you really feel. Your ex vice principal. Some my pooty. Some my pooty. Hey. What a sound of femicide. Yeah. Well, he had he had that you know that quote unquote good hair it was pretty and wavy. Yeah. Yeah, and so I guess it's harder. I guess it's harder to you know to to let that shit go and he's living, when it he's was living so the glory cold, days. Cold. Yeah, you gotta keep them glory days going. Man, he thought I it was still eighty five. <laughs> <laughs> trying to bring back the glory days. He was trying. He was trying to live in them El Bar's years. He was. Uh huh. He was off to the side talking about um brushing his hair. Talking about Mm-mm-mm. love me in a special way. Oh my god, rhythm of, <laughs> rhythm of the night ass nigga. Rhythm of the night ass. <laughs> oh lord, that's hilarious. All right, lunch is over. Over, over. The my ring is my ring. Yep, we ring the bell. All right. 
So that's actually a um a good segue into into second period because we just talking about quote unquote good hair. The second part of that backlash for um Kendrick Lamar Crumble was the Richard Pryor Astro comment. Because and the issue there wasn't just that that he said that. That was fine. The issue was that he said, show me a Richard Pryor Afro. And what he said in his rhyme and then what he showed you in the video was... And just so people don't understand, hair has types. Okay? Like the finest, most silkiest type is like type one. And uh-huh. then... When it starts getting a little bit more textured, it's type two hair. Then when it starts getting a little bit more curlier, um, it's a type three. And the most kinky hair type that most African-Americans have is type four. And most of us have between type four B and type four C. And Richard Pryor Afro is, Afro is a type 4 C, the kinkiest of kinky. And then what Kendrick Lamar shows you in the video is not a 4 C. It's a 3 A or 3 B. Maybe a 3 C, like in there. So this part of the argument, I kind of understand where the backlash comes from because this is something that happens over and over again. And it kind of is almost subliminal given the fact that you said you wanted to see type 4C hair you show me type 3A hair so what are you saying to me are you saying that you don't really like for type 4C hair right and this is this right here is a perfect example of video killed the radio star <laughs> yeah <laughs> basically <laughs> because you know what, I have, what I have to say to I all that well, and, and and my issue just before you go that do that, and texturism goes hand in hand with colorism, and that's the problem. Oh, no, is no. that colorism? You know, in general, when people have you know had more of the slave, you know, slash massa in the quarters, you know, situation, then their hair situation is different. And so it's representative, again, of this colorism, colonialism. So the, the texture argument is still a colorism argument, technically. Well, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not so, I'm not so, I still think they would Um, I... I understand where black women are coming from with that because especially nowadays where there's so much hatred towards black women and so much subliminal bullshit that keeps coming across to us like we're not good enough or you just flat out hate us because there are black men who get up on things saying I hate black women fuck them black bitches that they all this they all that all of them are this they fucking suck they're horrible mothers and they they've dragged our whole neighborhood like what the fuck if if that didn't exist, I would say, yeah, no biggie, whatever. But it's 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 wild and crazy out there right now. I don't think I don't think Kendrick fits into that category though. But then you look at Kendrick, long time, you know, um, woman, and she has type three hair. It's either. 3A, somewhere between 3A and 3C. She's got right. type 3 hair. She does not have I, type 4 hair. Yeah, and I think that was everyone's issue with it. Like, um, well, not everyone's oh. issue, but I think that was some that was some people's issue with it. Like, oh. um, you know, oh. you can't be <laughs> you can't be calling for these preferences and like, you know, you're not even uh yeah. dealing with somebody yep. dealing with somebody that fit into that category. Yep. I mean, you know, I feel like. I feel like with the song, at least, he was just giving, again, he was giving an example or something he would like to see more of. Like, for years, people people go on interviews and they go in magazines and they do interviews and questionnaires and stuff like that about 
photo shoot and stuff that they do, and they always complain about being photoshopped, and they always complain about how they go for a certain preference with girls that they pick for these certain shoots. And like, as soon as somebody with with a good head on their shoulder, somebody with a reputation speaks out about it, it's like outrage behind no matter what they say. Whether he said that or he said it on the other extreme, like it would have been outraged either way. But here's my question to you, Anna, about that, okay? The lyric literally says, show me a richer prior afro, and then you don't. The fuck? And, and I said before, like, I think he picked I don't girl, understand picked why you didn't show me a richer prior afro. I, I said before, I think he picked the girl that he picked for the video because she looked good either way. With whether she was made up for a video shoot like they normally would anybody else, or whether so, she came to the video shoot and her natural her natural so look. So find somebody with type four C hair that also looks like that. Now I don't like Wale, but I just looked at his his latest like newest video talking about like you look so good you could be a model. He has almost every type of woman in that in that video, and type four C hair is represented. That's his prerogative. True, but he never even said, show me a Richard Pryor afro and then didn't. I'm saying if you're going to say that, if if you're going to say that, then show it to me. You don't want to just say show it to me and then you didn't do it. I mean, it's your preference. It just... And here's all the thing right here. You know... My issue with Jim and I, they love saying one thing and doing the fucking other. They are a walking dichotomy. So well, I'm I mean, looking at him like, got where? You got him talking about it. He does. And I was thinking for a while, is this like, is he doing this shit on purpose? I wonder. Right. It seemed like, it seemed like either he did it on purpose or somebody was being irresponsible. I think he picked a girl that looked like his woman. That's what I think he did. Well, maybe he didn't get any girls that look good either way with 4C hair. That, you know what? You know what? I didn't even take that into consideration until you just said that. But, yeah, that probably could have happened. Because a lot of times when you say, like, you can't have a you can't have a woman or a female in your life. And then you say, oh, well, I prefer this type of woman. And then make her feel like the outcast. Like, damn, well, why are you with me? Because females act like that, too. That could have been I mean, the case, too. There's, there's um, a million variables. Can we not use the consider. word females right now? Please don't. No, oh, shit. Apparently, apparently, females don't like being referred to as females. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> apparently. Apparently, we don't. I am a woman, boy. Would <laughs> you like me to call you a boy? <laughs> Apparently, like if you call me a male, I wouldn't have a problem with that. But that's just me. Yeah, these males I'm in the room with now. No, I don't care. <laughs> no, no, I know you guys don't. I know you guys don't 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 mean it like um don't don't mean it like that. But can't can't like, give us a pass and not give Michael B. Jordan a pass. Um, Michael B. Jordan said it in a weird ass way though. He Ooh. said that in the like. And I and I've I've seen interviews with Michael B. Jordan. He everything he says is not benign. I I can't give him a pass. I don't like that shit. <laughs> I feel like I feel like oh, what's his name um and um <laughs> and Belly. I don't like that shit. I don't like that shit. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Michael, B. Jordan, Michael B. Jordan gets a shout out. He gets a shout out for up there. <laughs> for what? We in a robber. For wearing a, he's a person to promote a robber. <laughs> He wasn't actually wearing one. I said that. Look, so you guys don't know this, but we've been tripping over this man this romper, this romper <laughs> for like a week with everybody else. So it's like I was talking about dudes who probably would wear a romp helm, and Michael B. Jordan is a prime man. candidate for that shit. And I, I, I Miguel, Miguel will wear a romp him too. I won't put it past neither one. Pharrell of them. has already worn a romp him. I'm probably sure. <laughs> but yeah, he, he probably, probably, he probably, <laughs> he probably did. But no, seriously though, uh, Kendrick, he probably did like um use that particular girl to like you know appease like the emotions of his girlfriend or whatever. Like that could have happened too. I don't know. Um, we, should, we should get him on the show. Uh, I, uh, hey, one day if Kendrick wants to come on the show, he can come on with Big Sean. They can debate. 
and battle. <laughs> <laughs> and battle I've, look I've been playing a lot of Big Sean here lately and I still can't hear it I don't understand like I'm not really still getting it so I would like to hear him and Kendrick come on and battle each other and then we can ask him about Humble and why he did not show me a Richard Pryor 4C kinky there are beautiful women of all shades there are beautiful women of all hair types I have seen some drop dead gorgeous women with 4C hair uh-huh. And they and he he lives in Los Angeles. I call bullshit on that. Well, look, look, he could <laughs> not find. He couldn't find it's a, a girl with four C, a girl with four C hair that wanted to be made up and fried, dyed, and laid to the side for the comparison shot. There are plenty of models. That. There are plenty of <laughs> models with tight four hair who will wear. But I'm saying, you know, I'm saying he did a dual shot with the girl that he picked. Like he had her made up in a one shot. Yeah, I saw. Made up to the industry standards, and then he had her with her natural look on the other side. He couldn't find no girl with four C hair that was willing to do that. Well, that's another conversation. I call bullshit on that. Um, that's another conversation <laughs> <laughs> because um, people were saying that uh, it's two different girls in that shot. Like the the one showing her ass, that's a completely different girl than the yeah, one that's, 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 that's showing her yeah. face. Yeah. And that yeah, was but, the issue I mean, too. You gotta find somebody that's willing to get on national TV with stretch marks on their ass. That's a yeah. That's a struggle. <laughs> Not really. I mean, he he's Kendrick like, yeah, Lamar. I'm and he's going ass, to pay I'm a, you. I'm the ass stretch mark girl from the Kendrick Lamar video. That's me. Well, he's, he's going to pay you, so you're gonna be up there with your ass and stretch mark. Then he's gonna give you. But I mean, I'd rather be an anonymous stretchy stretch mark ass girl. I think it's. I mean, in my mind, it's just more. Um, I don't want to see your anonymous stretch mark on TV. Nowhere. <laughs> Anonymous. But well, so why, why not? Why not? Yeah. That's, that's a natural huh? thing. That's, that's what right. you're saying. Why Everybody not? got no, stretch marks. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about this guy personally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> talking about he'd rather be and all that. Like, nah, I'm, I'm saying if I had to choose. <laughs> if I had to choose. <laughs> I can't. I, I, I would to. be more of the mind, Anthony, to, to believe that that a lot of black men do not want to admit that they are not, they have been conditioned not to be attracted to 4C hair. Period. They don't like, how many, How long have we been speaking from people for having nappy hair, for being nappy and for, that's B2B. like one of our tropes. That's, that's one of the tropes in the black community. They always yeah. talking about that. So uh, how many black men are actually attracted to tight forestry here. There are some. There are tons. Yep. But, I mean, I feel like, too, at the end of the day, we ignoring the fact, like, he never said you gotta have forestry here. We jumped to those conclusions. No, because he said he Richard said, Pryor. He said Richard so what? Pryor. So what? He said, That's show me something he- natural. Like an afro on Richard Pryor. He didn't say a nappy afro. He didn't say an afro like Richard well, Pryor. Well, that's a nappy he said, afro. He said a fact. Like, Richard Pryor has an afro. That's natural. He didn't say, show me an afro like Richard Pryor. He said, show me something natural. Like an afro on Richard Pryor. Okay, so now you're arguing semantics what you're doing, basically. He could have said, show me something natural. He could have said, show me something natural like yellow on Big Bird. That's but, natural. And, that's and, and, and if he did say that, I would concur, but that's not what he said, and that is not the reason why. But he said like, that I for a like reason. Reaching. I feel like I feel like I Nah, feel like he said it for a reason. He definitely said it for a reason. I feel like they reached him. Because he could have picked any other thing the same way you said, but he picked that. I feel like he reached him. They reached nah. him. They reached him. Show me something not natural, like Afros and Richard Pryor. I think I think that a lot of people are just in our community. Unfortunately, we are, as they say, we have been conditioned and we're color struck. And even if we try to consciously say we're not, your subconscious gives you the fuck away. Exactly. But uh, I still feel like I need to. Um. On that on that same uh, note, though. Um, I get what you were saying too. Like, uh, you know, men. A lot of times, like, you know, we 
a lot of times we don't know necessarily what we want. Like, uh, guys will say one thing, and I think that was I think that was another issue with the situation. Like, females felt like you know the guys that were praising him for saying something like that. It was mm-hmm. like, well, damn, well, damn, how you feel about me, or how you feel about the girl that you know you was talking to last week, that kind of thing. Because it looked like you know a lot of guys just be fence jumping. It'd be like, oh well. You were just but looking at a Nicki Minaj video. To, yeah, but I mean, but but what they have to really do, I think that what we that we that what we have to do is we have to start just saying there's a different, there's an array of what's beautiful out there, and not keep propping one thing up like that's the only way to be beautiful. Right. Yeah, and I feel like yeah. that 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 line was getting at that. But then it undermined itself with the visual that it presented. That's the only I thing. Think it under, like, I don't think it undermined itself. I think that some people who were upset about it undermined it. Or they missed the whole point. No, I I get the point, but I also understand their point. Because when you have an issue and a problem that's prevalent in your community, that's something you have to be cognizant of. You can't just pass it on by like it's not going to have an impact. Like You have to be mindful, unfortunately, of a lot of different things. And that's the problem. That's the problem. Like, if you're going to comment at all on the problems that fight the black community, like, you got to be prepared for some sort of backlash because they're all so complicated. Oh, yeah. And but you're going to get backlash and you just got to kind of roll so, with it. I mean, and it's like, like, you okay. got to choose but, the, the lesser of two evils. But you're prepared but, to deal with. But us as men got to take responsibility for that, too, because like like Ms. Mitchell, we talk about like um, stuff we do and say it dictates the way that women behave towards each other. It dictates the way they behave towards things that represent them and th- and stuff of that nature. So like yeah. when you got yeah. when you got guys when you got guys praising Kendrick for saying something like that, it you know it makes women look at themselves like, well, damn, well, what kind of women do you prefer? You know, like I said, you know, uh, that same dude might have just been looking at Nicki Minaj yesterday, like, damn, I want that. But now you're praising Kendrick for saying, oh, he wants something natural. You know what? I think I think secretly that a lot of things that are going on that right now, especially in the beauty industry and stuff, if women just stopped all of that stuff, I don't think men would care. Men don't. <laughs> I think they actually was like, can you see, please stop painting your face up like a... I, like I, I really think that they would be okay. I think they would be okay if we just wore some lipstick and some eyeliner. You ain't even gotta do that. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta some show up. Just show up. Some chapstick. Just show up with some chapstick and a ponytail. <laughs> hey, yo. That's, that's good enough for me. I can't. That's good enough. I mean, yeah. if these dudes wasn't out here, wasn't out here putting these ugly girls on a pedestal, I don't want to get into that. though. I'm sorry. That's well, I mean, have you seen? I'm I'm sure you guys haven't seen this, but I've seen this a lot of times. Speaking of that, like these girls that get on, you know, YouTube and tell you how to. I'm gonna do air quotes and show you how to slay. Oh my god! Like you should see what they start out looking like before they paint their face. That's why I say makeup is the devil. <laughs> <laughs> like kabuki. Make, like I'm like this devil. shit is. A, I was like this shit is a. This no, but that agent. sounds that's a that agent. sounds shallow. <laughs> that sounds that sounds very shallow. I feel like I need to clear that up. Well, my thing is that whoever you are, you know, and again, you shouldn't be hiding behind makeup. Right. Don't right. Hide. Eventually, it's it's coming out. So I'm normally clean faced until I have something to do or somewhere to go, and then. You know, and then it's something yeah. you know different. And I mean, I choose to do whatever I want with my hair. I wear, you know, all kinds of different hair. But my, under my whatever I got on, my hair is natural. And you either get yeah. with that or you don't. You know, I feel like if women wanted to, they could. And then men would just eventually they would just follow. They would fall in because they they still love women, so they're gonna just go with whatever women want to do. Yeah, true. But, at the, yeah, at the same much, time, but a lot of times, a lot of times, time, time, you gotta you gotta account for the fact that women women be trying to impress each other too. 
They do. And I feel like that's more of what's going on. You can't ugly shame people either, though. I mean, if you ugly, you ugly. I will. You can't ugly shame <laughs> folks. And it shouldn't just be all about looks. I will tell you, and it shouldn't. And it shouldn't. It shouldn't be all about the looks, but I need you to not to to look like yourself more than <laughs> looking like someone completely different than yourself. And then when you take, you know, everything off your face, I mean, I get where men are coming from with that. Like if you take your face off and your face is completely different. Yeah, that's the problem. If you look like a whole nother person. I mean, I get like the like the hair stuff is a little different for me because. I understand our hair struggles and the things that we go through, but your face is, is just kind of your face. That's like the introduction. <laughs> yeah. First impressions mean a lot, and if your face isn't really a reflection of your normal face, then that's a problem. And nobody wants to go, like, put their head down and wake up and, oh my God, what did I wake up with? Like, Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> like, I, like, that makes me think of that, um, that, that, um, ludicrous, um, song and the video to that ludicrous song um, but I mean, where he time, talks about how many drinks he has to have and then when he goes to sleep he wakes up with like a she's like a wolf man when he wakes up like not what he went to sleep with at all but at the same time you have to look mm-hmm. past the external well at everybody thinks time. something different is beautiful that's true you know one man's, you know, oil painting is another man's oil painting in the garbage. Yeah. And that's generally how, you know, that goes. Hey, is so, that why you do song that's called Mask Off? <laughs> I don't even, I don't, I hate that. I try to listen to that song. I couldn't. But look, I look, at the, to look at the logic, look at the logic. He's on Molly and Percocet, so his perception is already yeah. fucked up. So you can take your makeup off and it won't be a problem. Always perked up. I just advocate perks and Molly. They're wonders for your relationship if you have. I guess so. Face. You want to go make me listen to the song again? Like damn. I can't. No. <laughs> it's like it's see. That's like little person in the damn beer goggles. It's like. I got these beer goggles on, so as long as I take this next drink, I'm going to end up... That's another thing. Ladies, ladies, y'all got to stop, you know, taking so much to heart as far as these men, especially the ones that be on drugs all day. Like, y'all got to stop... (laughs) Y'all got to stop taking these opinions to heart. Like, I don't understand. Everything's different when you're sober. That and, like, these dudes nowadays, especially, like, a lot of them... When they're young, sometimes they're just on a bunch of fuckboy shit. Mm, hey, they they young. get older and they and they grow up. They, you know, if you grow up and you've actually grown up, you know, you don't think the same thing at 21 as you do when you get 29. Ideally. If Ideally. you've actually grown up. Yeah. And, not, and just not got older. Like, you know. But, um, and you said you had recess today. Well, I don't, you know, if we're willing to do that, yeah, for recess, I like to talk about somebody. That's sure. near and dear to my, near and dear to my heart. Near and dear to my heart. Does he have natural hair? As far as I know. Does his, <laughs> he ass, got have, does his ass have stretch marks? He got that C4? I, I wouldn't know that much. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I don't want to know him like that. I don't want to like that. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, what'd you say? What was the question? Nah, I was saying he got that C4 shit. He got that, you know, that afro like Richard Pryor. Yeah. I, I mean, he's doing his album cover. That's in 4C. Album cover. That's in 4C. Natural hair like Richard Pryor. So for recess today, I want to talk about, I don't know if you call him up and coming. I call him up and coming because nobody knows who he is. But this cat from Chicago, my man Ad Two. Yay! Ad Two from Chicago. He, he, the first time I heard Ad Two was on another candidate for recess, Actual Proof. They put out a two part mixtape called Talented Tim. Then they had a Malcolm and a Martin side to it. 
excellent project. I love that project. But oh, they both track. have um, C4, um, 4C Afro. Yeah, they do. And I'm in, I'm in contact with um, one of them, the guy Sundown, Sundown from Actual Cool. Like I can send him a message right now, he'll respond to me right away. He, he oh, cool, cool like that. Yeah, but they had this track called Super Genius, which is a follow up to an earlier track they had called Genius on an earlier mm-hmm. project, yada, yada. But it was like a posse cut and it had a bunch of people. This was a couple of years ago. So it mm-hmm. had like a young a young Kendrick Lamar on it. Um, actual, actual Proof was on it. Um, this girl named Brittany Street, who's nasty lyrically. She's disgusting lyrically. Um, maybe you can get into her for me just one day. And a couple other people, but it had uh, Add Two on it. But I didn't know who he was at the time, but his verse was one of my favorites. When I really took note of him was one day I was cleaning the house and I had my music on shuffle and this song called Modern Day Coons came on. And it's basically talking about how everybody's glorifying like materialistic things and the hook. Mm-hmm. The hook was about how like BET love y'all niggas, Mari Povich love y'all niggas, real hip hop, real love of hip hop, whatever it's called, love y'all niggas. Cause when you act like niggas, like, Et cetera, et cetera. And like I stopped, I looked him up and I found out he got like an extensive back catalog of mixtapes, free albums and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I went back and I listened to most of them. The earliest one I could find was, it's called A Tale of Two Cities, Volume 2. And this was in 07. And he recently dropped uh, his debut album on Ninth Wonders imprint, Jamila Records, and it's called Crazy. So he Tour. did all of that, all of that mixtape. Um, all that mixtape stuff. Just he dropped did all that on his, his debut album he, just now. He dropped his debut album in 2015, Crazy Report, okay. on okay. on Ninth Wonders Jamila imprint, and Pray is spelled with an E, so it's P R E Y, Crazy Report. But That's what's his, his his mixtapes are like incredible, like they album quality. My favorite being More Miss Calls, which was dropped in 2013. All right. But so tell everybody like, again what, 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 what his name is one more time. His name is Add Two. Add AD, like A-D. AD. Yeah, Add Two. ADD. That's a play on his initials. His name is Andre Dewan Daniels. Okay. Add Two. Add Two. So it's a play on his initials. But I listen to it. I, I, I think he's dope. He's yeah. dope. Like he got the most disrespectful lyrics I heard in a while. In a while. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's like consistent among his tracks. Like you get these these conscious tracks about the situation of black culture and the neighborhoods mm-hmm. and things like that. But sprinkle in between those, you just get like these disgusting lyrical displays of just MCism. That's a word I just made up. MCism. Like he he's flexing his muscles. I feel like somebody has probably said MCism at some point. I never heard it. I'm claiming it. I'm speaking of toys, yeah. <laughs> you know, what, you know, what, uh, you know what I, um was funny about Ed too. I put um I put him on. Well, I put somebody um I used to work with on to him uh, a couple years ago. Um, when the album had first came out, yeah, Pray for the Poor, and um they like you know the person I put I put him on to was uh they 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 into like you know like. They one of those people that's like first thing they hear on the radio. Oh, it's hot! You know they one of those type of people. Yeah. But you know I put him on the ad too, and I'm like, you know, you probably never gonna hear him on the radio. I'm like, but he dope. Mm-hmm. Listen to it. So you know I had made, um, I had gave him a copy of the CD or whatever, and they was banging it. And like a week later, they was like, yo, man, like he really talking about some stuff on there. And I'm like, yeah, I told you that. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, and, right. So their attitude was more like you know like why why we can't hear more stuff like that on the radio you know right, what I'm saying? like right, mind right, you, right. this is this is um somebody I was trying to convince like you know they do have stuff out there like that you're just not gonna hear it on the radio a lot of times because of politics or because, whatever the case or, or yeah. and really just because of what's gonna sell and what people are exactly you know. exactly it's indicative of a larger people. problem it is right. Much. But um, it was it was it was dope to me that um he reacted like that because you know I had put him on to like independent artists before then I had put him on to like underground artists before then he really wasn't feeling them or whatever, yeah. but um when I let him hear Ed too like he was really digging the message so like you know that's what I really appreciated about um that uh particular um album or him you know uh, Ed too as an artist that artist yeah uh, I feel like yeah. he takes a different approach to it than most people do though. 
Like he got, like I said, he got those conscious tracks where he's appealing to your 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 more in, intellectual side. But at the same time, those tracks they have like memorable hooks that you can sing along with, like especially so modern. Basically, so basically, so basically, what you're saying is he's like he's a throwback MC. He is a throwback MC. He's a throwback MC, but he takes notes from what's popular at the moment. Right, right. Well, that because that because what you're describing is a throwback aesthetic. Like right. I can get on this mic and really, you know, bring your mind there, bring your mind where I need it to be. But I could also grab this mic and get ugly and braggadocious and, and just, just rip shit apart. Just yeah. rip shit apart, and that's but that's what the essence of an MC is and should be. All and, the and rest me, of this shit that's out there that, that that's really out there, as you said, which is indicative of a larger problem, really should not be happening in hip hop. Exactly. Exactly. And, and just to just to lend to the image of what a dope MC he is, like I haven't heard anything from him in a while. He hasn't posted on social media. I haven't seen any advertisements or whatnot. So me as a fan of his, I'm concerned about like his grandmother. And oh. the fact that I know, the fact that I know that his grandmom oh. is going through, like she's dealing with um, dementia and whatnot. Oh no, the why fact, do you say that? The fact that I know that speaks to the caliber of MC that this person is. That's true. Like he, he goes in with his personal issues and whatnot. He lays them all out on wax and he paints a picture for you yeah. so that you get an understanding of what he's dealing with, what he's going through, and his outlook on life. And I think that that's A1 in terms of what an MC is supposed to be. Yeah, I think it is too. Well, I mean, you can listen to other MCs for that right now. You can put on some J. Cole to get you how to um, fold yeah. some laundry. Yeah, there's, there's, there's quite a bit. <laughs> there's quite a few people out there. Yeah, there's, some, there's some people now that are. They're, they're t- I think it's dope to talk about everyday things. And right. oh, and shit that actually really happens to people, except for a whole bunch of look at my shit I don't have yet. Right, right, exactly. Or like shaming you because they're richer than you are. And right, like, but you gotta understand, we coming up in a we coming up in a culture in a um, generation that's not used to uh, dealing with real life all the time. You know, like right, they don't, right. A lot of people, a lot of people don't want to hear about real. Like I don't want to come for work. You know, <laughs> and then had to hear about somebody else they had to deal with you know a similar issue at work or whatever yeah, like they want to they want to escape yeah pretty much but at the same time they, me as a me as a fan like i don't want to hear about your riches and problems with your bugatti and shit like that because i can't relate and to that. neither but see the, and that is where i think it's starting to move a little bit more now i think people are starting to get fed up with people telling them how they don't have as much money as they do mm-hmm because they're doing entitled shit, as like Kanye walking off the stage at shows, like fuck y'all, even though y'all pay for this, like you know, just doing crazy. These people doing crazy things out here that's really pissing yeah. people off. Yeah, you know? and I so, can't, I can't relate to none of that. I can't relate to that. Me, but this dude, this dude right here, who who seems to to gravitate, or his his life seems to revolve around his relationship with his family and his community. Like I can relate to that. And see that's that's real. That's, 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 real. that's dope. That's dope as hell right there. So everybody, mm-hmm. that was um Ed too. And he's a he's a shy town. He's a shy town homie. So shy everybody, shy town, stand up. I'm in shy town right now. That's where I live. So you know we are more than Chief Keith. <laughs> Thank God. Much more. Much more. Much more. Much and more. you know, and and, and even Chance because Chance is from here too. But. True. You know, we're we're much more than just that. We got some other dope people for you to listen to. Like, and I even, I got my cousin. My cousin loves hip-hop. And I shared ad too with him. And he was like, who is this dude? He's dope as hell. I was like, he's from he's here. He's nice. Like, he's nasty. He's one of the nastiest he like, MCs I heard in a long time. This? He's nasty. Like, I hats off all props to ad too for being He was a, shocked a real he didn't know about it, too. Like, I never... I never put my cousin up on shit from his own hometown, but he's like, uh, yo, this is dope. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what the problem is. Like, Common even, Common got on the radio and shouted him out a couple See? years ago. And Common asked Common shit. Mm-hmm. But, so, um, we're coming to the end of the show, and I don't know if anybody's going to do this homework for next week, 
Because the only person who's actually read the entire book at this point is Aaron. Uh, this book is all, tough. All in one shot. It's um, Born to Youth, Mike. Which is by Michael Eric. I write long ass books, Tyson. Uh, and a bunch <laughs> of other people who follow that same suit. And, and some other people who follow the same suit. And it, <laughs> it is about the illustrious debut album of Mr. Nazir Jones. Uh, it's it's all about Illmatic and it breaks Illmatic down very succinctly. Very. I feel like this was a Harvard thesis paper. I, I mean, I feel like this was somebody's doctoral dissertation mm-hmm. that they did on Nazir's Illmatic. I'm yeah. not hating on it. It was, I mean... So far, it's really good. So, if you want to tackle Born to Use Mike, please do that homework for in a week and see if you do it. Yeah. Um, we'll only be discussing the first half of the book. Um, <laughs> so then we're gonna split it up into the second half and do the second half at a different time because it's so long and it's so dense. It's There's really a lot dense. to take from it. There's a lot. It's a lot to take from it. It's, it is really, really dope. It just shows you what a dope and see that Nas really is. Agreed. Agreed. But again, I want to say, like, I, I wonder if he even considered half of the stuff that they're talking about when he was making the album. He probably did not, because a lot of times people do this shit, and then when critics come along and pick it apart, it's like, that's what I did? I had no play, idea I was doing that. Just play along. Just play along. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I was, yeah, I was, thinking about that, I was thinking about that the whole time reading it, too. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's and actually I just, pretty. I just came up on Charlemagne's book. Uh yeah, we're gonna do Charlemagne's book too, but that that was not gonna be um as difficult as born to use Mike. It's definitely so. not scholarly. I don't no get offense that to Charlemagne so the God, but it's not scholarly. It's, it's definitely a fun, a more fun, light hearted. Yeah. I, I don't get that impression so far. So far. I just wanna no. say I got up to the part where he got his ass whooped by the boy. That was hilarious. I didn't read much. I got up to the part where he got beat up by the ball. <laughs> he thought he was going to die. I'm actually listening to it through audio. I'm not reading it. I'm actually listening mm-hmm. to it through audio. So it's funny. Yeah, I like it so far. I'm going to keep reading that and, and be back to y'all. We'll be back to y'all on that episode. Word, word, word. word. So, um, I had fun today talking about Humble, my, my two brothers here, Ant and Aaron. And that's our show. We really hope that you will join us again next time and listen to us talk about Born and Use Mice. If you don't want to read the whole book yourself because you're just thinking, man, Michael Eric Dyson makes me feel like a donut. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Just tune in and listen to us talk about it. It's almost the same thing. <laughs> almost. We'll just digest it as best as possible for you. <laughs> and school is officially out. Shout out to Ed too, brother. If anything's going on with the grandma, I'm just know the fans are behind you. We understand. And we waiting on word, that new music. Word. We waiting on that new music. Keep your head up, bro. Is that it? <laughs>